that there's a wish for change, a wish for a new beginning for tenants here in Hammersmith and Fulham. So I'm very pleased to be here and I'm very pleased to have been asked to help with the Residence Commission on Council Housing. The election manifesto on which the present council was elected last year contained a very striking and original commitment to residents of Hammersmith and Fulham Council Housing. That commitment was, and I quote, we will work with council housing residents to give them ownership of the land their homes are on, close quotation marks. It was a promise which arose out of the threat to residents from major private developments in the borough, like those the previous council was carrying out of Earl's Court and considering in places like Hammersmith Riverside. And the purpose of the promise is to protect tenants and leaseholders from the risk in future of the disposal of their homes without consultation, from the risk, as several residents have put it to me, of having their homes sold from out under them. So that's what the Labour Party promised in its election manifesto. And that's what the people of Hammersmith and Fulham voted for last year. You know, Everybody always says that politicians should keep their promises. And that's what the council is doing in setting up the Residence Commission. The council is doing the right thing. They believe that what they have promised is in the best interests of tenants and leaseholders. So this is not being foisted on you. This is a democratic process and the matter will be decided democratically, because you, you, the tenants, will decide in the end what you want in a ballot. But still, some may say, look, we know about Earl's Court, and we know there was a threat, but now we've got a change of council, they're not going to sell off the estates, so what's the problem? Now, I don't want to be part of political, I'm going to tell you something about my own background in a minute, but let me assure you that my party political days are over. However, the reality is that, yes, you do have a new council now, but you can't be sure that you'll have it forever. In fact, it could all change in three years' time at the next council elections. You could have an administration with a different political complexion and with quite different ideas about the future of the estates. I don't want to tell you there's a lot going on in Hammersmith and Fulham, a lot of development. This is a highly desirable part of London. And as I've gone around, I've learned that one time or another, a lot of estates, on a lot of estates, there have been rumours about the possibility of development, in some cases more than rumours, actual plans, in one or two cases it's actually happened. And let's be clear about another thing. People talk about secure tenancies, and a secure tenancy is a good thing. But remember that a secure tenancy means that the council has the duty to provide you with a home, but not necessarily the one you live in. In other words, a secure tenancy does not give you security in the home and place you've lived in for years. Indeed, even with a secure tenancy, there's a risk that tenants are not even guaranteed a home in the same borough. So what we've learned is that the land can be sold off by the council, or for that matter, by any other organisation where residents are not in charge, where residents cannot say no. That's why I think there will be a widespread wish amongst residents for us to try to find a way of running the estates here in Hammersmith and Fulham, which will mean that people are genuinely secure 
in their own homes. And that's why the present administration made its promise in the first place. Finding an answer to this promise will involve some big questions of law, finance, and just how residents will govern any new arrangements, which is why the Council is setting up the Residence Commission on Council Housing to examine and make recommendations on the issues and the choices. Now, I imagine that the Commission will want to come up with several options to put to the Council and to residents, who may well have to be balloted in due course. It depends on what is chosen. This is a plan to ensure that residents feel more secure in the possession and enjoyment of their homes. And it's therefore right that residents should take the lead in the work of the Commission. It's intended that there should be 12 members in all, together with a chair, three independents to advise, three leaseholders and six tenants. And because of my knowledge and experience of housing, I've been asked to be chair. So, a word about myself. Until the last general election, when I retired, I was for nearly 20 years the MP for Streatham in South London, an area very similar to Hammersmith and Fulham, and where I dealt over the years with thousands, thousands of housing cases in my advice centres. From 2003 to 2005, I was the nation's housing minister in Whitehall. For the last six years, I've been the chair of the Lambeth Almo, Lambeth Living, and I'm also the regulator of the private leasehold sector. So I've had a lot to do with housing. Starting from the end of this month, March, the Hammersmith and Fulham Residence Commission on Council Housing will sit sit for six months with a view to presenting its report in September. With the letter sent out by Councillor Homan to all council residents three weeks ago, there was an invitation, you'll recall, for volunteers for the Commission. And I'm very pleased to say that there's been a tremendous response with nearly 100 applications. And this also tells me that there's a real appetite for change amongst residents. Working together with four residents nominated by the borough's TRA forums, I'm now in the process of sifting through these applications to choose the resident members of the Commission. And then we'll get down to the work of the Commission. The job of the Commission is to find a way of running the estates which means which will mean that people are secure in their homes because they will have the ownership of the land their homes are on. Now, that doesn't mean that each council resident will individually own the plot of land. How could that be when so many of our residents live in flats in blocks? Nor does it mean that a resident in a council street property uh, will own the land uh, uh, the freehold of the land their home is on. What it does mean is that tenants, as an entire group, would own the land on which their homes are located. Under such an arrangement, the land and the homes would be managed by a resident-led body elected by tenants and leaseholders. What it also means is that the land and buildings would have to be transferred from the ownership of the council as at present to the ownership of the new resident-led organisation. Now, in fact, there are plenty of examples of such transfers up and down the country, and there's plenty of variety amongst them corresponding to the wishes of local residents. In some cases, Council housing has been transferred to an existing housing association which operates in other boroughs. In other cases, a local housing provider has been set up specifically to serve one particular locality. In some cases, 
the governing board is elected, in other cases it's appointed, in some cases residents are a majority of the board, in other cases the board is split equally three ways between independents, tenants and councillors. In Rochdale, in the northwest of England, the new housing body is a co-op with tenants having shares. And in the East London Community Land Trust, the buildings are owned by the council and the land by residents. In other words, there's quite a lot of experience elsewhere in the country of such transfers. Hundreds of thousands of tenants seem to live quite happily in them. What the Housing Commission will do is to look at this experience and recommend what seems best suited to the residents of Hammersmith and Fulham. Now, I know that some people are against this plan. I know that there are people from right across the political spectrum who are fundamentally against any change in the ownership of council homes. And I respect their views. However, I want to say this about the claims they make, they make about any future transfer. Be assured that whatever recommendation the Commission makes to the Council, tenants and leaseholders will be at the heart of it. And be assured that you will have the same security of tenure you have now, that your rights and entitlements will not be affected and that future rents and service charges will be clearly set out before you're asked to vote on any proposal. And always, of course, the aim of that proposal will be for people to feel secure in their homes. But I should add that there will be another job for the Commission to do at the same time. Because security is not the only thing residents will be interested in. After all, there's not much point in being secure in your home if it's falling apart around your ears. In other words, any plan for the future has got to include arrangements for ongoing repairs and improvements of homes. For example, I'm told that although the Decent Homes Programme of a few years ago did the basic work on the modernisation of bathrooms and kitchens, there's quite a lot of work still needed on new lifts, on painting and decorating, and on roads and grounds on estates. So you've got to be confident that the plan will allow you to pay for improvements like these over the years, as well as keeping your own homes in good condition. But residents may be looking for a bit more than only maintaining homes and estates. You may decide that you only want to see that you want to see new social housing for the next generation, or that you want additional and better services for the local community, health, childcare, education, training and jobs, all of which will need to be paid for, and all of which may require some financial input from the council, the banks and central government in Whitehall. The Commission will look at the financial reliability of the various choices. We will only put forward proposals to residents and the council which make sense in money terms. So, any proposals the Commission comes forward with will have to stack up financially and at no extra cost to the tenant and leaseholder. I say again, in the end, it will be you, the tenant, who decides. If a transfer is recommended, the law is quite clear. For a transfer of ownership, there must be a ballot of the tenants. And whatever the particular recommendation might be, the question on the ballot paper is also quite clear. Do you wish to stay as you are? that is, with the council, or do you wish to transfer ownership to a resident-led 
organisation. But all of this is quite a long way down the road. I assure you, you don't have to make your mind up now. There'll be plenty of information. There'll be a website for the, uh, for the Commission and we'll be putting out loads of messages like that. Indeed, over the next few months, while the Commission is looking at the detail of the choices all the time, we'll be keeping residents informed of our activities and consulting residents on the ideas and choices that are emerging. Indeed, the law of the land requires the Council to appoint somebody called an independent tenants advisor to ensure that residents have every opportunity to make an impartial and informed choice. But you also have my personal commitment to maximum consultation. After all, ladies and gentlemen, I've only been doing this job for three weeks and I've already attended two TRA forums at the uh, Town Hall and visited and met with residents on the White City, Edward Woods, Emden Gardens, William Church, Fulham Court, Clem Ackley, Queen Caroline and Lancaster Court Estate. So honestly, I think I've made a reasonable start and I assure you that I shall carry on as I started and so will the Commission, you have my word. Because this is all about you, the tenants and residents. The Council has made you a wonderful province. We, the Residents Housing Commission, now have to make sure we find a way forward that truly matches up to the needs and hopes of the residents of the borough. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for listening to me. I look forward now to getting to know you and working with you in the weeks and months ahead. Thank you very much indeed.